Welcome back, folks, to Let's Play Secret of Evermore. In the last part, we take we faced our evil twin, got a sword that's useless, uh, recorded our progress with this guy, uh, beat a foot knight, and let's move on. Now, the second part of the Dark Forest is nowhere near as daunting of a maze, but for some reason, the way to continue to get it, even though uh, they aren't even there anymore, is still to follow these gremlins in the trees. It's bizarre that the gremlins in the trees are still the most reliable way to get through this. Even though, like, there are no more gremlins. We've already faced all the gremlins when they transformed into us. So, yeah. For some reason, they f still f uh, form a pretty nice trail. And this second section is barely anything at all. However, this guy... Uh, do not fight. Do not attack him. Because you can talk to him. He's a nice guy. Hi! Hi, hi, hi! Your kindness is very welcome. This is actually the... Oglin that we fished out of the well uh, during, I believe, about three parts ago. To save me from the well was a great thing. You did not have to do that, you know. Please take this token of my appreciation. I believe he gives you the wizard token, or wizard's coin. But this is intense, effectively a dead end. But don't worry, the rest of the, the, rest of the maze is not that bad. So, if you look into his pouch, into the pouch, first of all, we're almost full. The wizard's coin uh, increases the magic defense. So, as if we weren't taking low enough damage from that other guy's crush, now it's even higher. Now, our, I'm not sure if our current stats will reflect that, and wow. No wonder his attacks weren't doing any damage. Holy crap. But, yeah. Our defense is very, 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 very high. Perhaps this is why, uh, the... Oops, I wasn't intended to go in there. Perhaps this is why the... Excuse me. The armor that we bought was actually relative... Uh, was almost optional. Because we could have gotten it, uh... <clears throat> because, yeah. It kind of breaks the game. Oh, actually, not really. It doesn't really break the game. It just kind of it just kind of undermines things. Mountain of Candy, 50 furlings. I have no idea what any of these things are referring to. All these signposts. Actually, that was the first time I actually read one of them. I'm not even kidding when I say when I was younger, I had I never read any of these signs because I thought they were just background decoration. So that's actually weirdly... Uh... <laughs> That's weird that one of them actually does read out something. Hold on. I want to see if... Because uh, I'm pretty sure this area has... Okay, none. Man, I almost feel like going back through all that maze and seeing what all those signposts read. But I don't want to do that. Anyway, you may want to already be charging up your attack. Because we got an interesting guy up ahead. Alright. You feel stronger. Flex! Enter this area. Dragon! Uh, so, yes. This is the boss of the area. Uh, I don't know what his name is. People like to call him Puff. People like to call him First Sterling. Um, I'm sure someone calls him Jim Sterling. Even though he doesn't look anything like him. Thank God for me. Uh, but, yeah. Simple enough boss. And the prize he gives you for beating him is the dumbest thing ever. And at the same time, the smartest thing ever. Yeah, he's quite easy to deal with. Receive 2,000 gold pieces. That's not the reward I was talking about. Received lance. Yeah, this game is all about Lance. The previous chapter was all about, uh, bronze. This one's all about Lance. There's a guy named Lance who gives you a spell called Lance. And a part later in the game where you get a Lance. This is basically, uh, the... <laughs> yeah, this is pretty much the best spear you'll get. Actually, if I'm not mistaken, like... Uh... N uh if I'm not mistaken, like, the last... Yeah, th first of all, this is a substantial up This is an upgrade from the old lance, even though I still have to charge it up to a certain level. I'm not going to do that now, but I am going to point out that... Whoa. 
But I'm going to point out that it is most certainly stronger with the right leveling than your previous weapon. Not that that will matter much. Uh, for how much time I've been in here, um, I believe I am about to come across uh, what is basically uh, the best weapon in the game. Pretty much undeniably the best weapon in the game. Alright. I know there are hidden passages, by the way, in this area. Whoosh. Anyway, come down here. And let's see, is this it? Nope. Anyway. So yeah, we're in the other castle's sewers. And because there aren't any people in here, uh, it's not running with anything. First of all, that disturbs me because that implies that the other tower's sewer lines were active because everyone was taking pisses and shits. Uh... One of the reasons that disturbed me is because I was running in that stuff. But the other thing is, apparently they're- Oh, see, you hit passage. Uh, but apparently, yeah, everyone goes all at once, and I'm disturbed forever. Because they're- apparently their piss is so bad, it's corrosive, because literally walking in the stuff was, uh, bad for your health. Not that- I'm pretty sure, like, actually running through your- through, like, sewers is also pretty dangerous, though. But probably for, like, bacterial reasons, not- for like, it's like acid or anything. Like, the moment these guys get home or whatever, they gotta shower like 30,699 times. And why my 99, I meant 999999999 times. Cause yeah, he's not clean. Uh, this entire time that I've been running up against these walls, I have basically been holding down the down, the down button because I'm looking for any hidden walls that, yep, all right, more hidden walls. I'm actually, uh, if, if you guys are wondering about my experience of play here, I, I actually am enjoying the adventure and the very meticulous aspect about this where I'm finding everything, but sort of an issue is that uh, this shows a tad bit on the overproduced side because, like, uh, I do have to go back to find all the details about the bosses or whatever, and that can be kind of a pain. Uh, that's why I'm actually kind of enjoying my run at Dark Souls a little bit better. But I guess this is the evolution of gaming. That uh, when th this game it, uh, holds a lot, or probably means a lot more to me than even I know. Like, for, all, for all I know, this game may have shaped a lot of my tastes. Maybe I wanted a big, sprawling adventure, but this is only the appetizer. And maybe this entire grand scheme just kind of feels like it's only part... Uh, the journey that I want to go on. I believe this is one of the most useless ones in the... It's a completely useless shortcut that doesn't do anything. But, let us hear. And this is something I've actually been trying to... Or, think, contemplating making a video about. Uh... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, no. Damn it, damn it, damn it. Because I think I missed something in there. Alright. So there's this dark side, uh... Raptor. But it's, it's an idea I have that perhaps, like, our... That maybe we don't, um, maybe we don't like older, our older, the older games, or actually... It's kind of, it's kind of a bizarre idea, but maybe our taste in current games are shaped in almost completely by our shaped in current ones, or our previous, uh, taste in games. So maybe, uh, the reason we know- we may not be favorable to, uh, newer games because they aren't like our older games. Now, that sounds like kind of a- Yeah, that, I'm not gonna lie, that kind of sounds like reflexive logic, or like, uh, circular logic, is what I meant to say. So this guy, apparently the, these guys- these guys have been going around a lot if they've been captured all the time. Anyway, open this up. And where will this lead? In the middle of the city. This is a very... I... I hate to be a pretentious uh, mu music snob, but this song... It really does capture, like, just the feel of this slice. Like, not complete sadness. You can almost just feel little bits of happy as if, like, there is, like, just hope in this world, but at the same time, you just look around and, you know, what else is there? It's like, how do you, it's like, where did this town go? We know that there can be good in it, but it's so sorrowful to be in here right now. 
Not everything's gone, but... What do we hold on to? Okay, now, uh, if you guys have ever played Final Fantasy IV, uh, this next guy, uh, might be... Uh, a little bit familiar. What have we here? You're not from Ebon Keep or Ivor Tower, as far as I can tell. No, we're from Podunk. Can't say I've heard of Podunk. Maybe you've heard of me. The name's Cecil of Baron Castle. Have you heard about my vi victory over Zeramus? Mm, can't say that I have. How about the time I turned into a paladin? What's a paladin? I'm not entirely sure. Mm, doesn't ring a bell. How about my adventure on the moon? Oh yeah, the adventure on the moon. All right, now I've settled down with my wife, Rosa, and we live a quiet life here in Ebon Keep. Is all this armor yours? Yes, this is my business. I sell items that I've accumulated over the years. So this is what a Final Fantasy character does once he's collected all of his loot. He just sells it back to new adventurers. This is actually a pretty good way to make a profit. And you can say, hey, these things are experienced. There's uh, these things will bring good luck with you. I, I, hell, I lived. It's nice, but business has been slow lately, what with most people leaving for Ivor Tower. Why didn't you leave here too? Leave too. Just stubborn, I guess. If we didn't feel right about it, still don't. You seem like a nice kid, but you'll never go. Uh, you'll never be going anywhere with that chintzy armor. So apparently Cecil has been uh, upgrading his vocabulary since the Final Fantasy days. Let me sit you up in style. What can I do for you? Um, this guy has the best armor of this region. He doesn't have the best armor of the of the game, uh, because there's still Act 4 to go, but considering how much longer we're gonna have to be not in Act 4, it's worth it to go to buy all this stuff. I appreciate your business. Please take this powerful weapon with my thanks. We played the intro of the game, uh, where we got a bazooka and crashed into the plateau. Well, did you ever wonder where that bazooka went? I found it in one of my adventures in the jungle on the plateau. Received the bazooka and the thunderball projectile. All right, here's the thing. Like, <laughs> he just casually found that friggin' thing. All right, so now the bazooka is automatically equipped because the developer is a dick. Uh, this is Undeniably the best weapon in the game, but uh, without any projectiles, without any sort of use out of it, it has no function. So I'm going to have to switch back to the lance. All right, but now I'm going to switch into the armor. So before the upgrade was pretty substantial. Yeah, pretty, pretty damn good. Pretty good. All right, time to sell more armor. The dragon helm. Iron Bracer, Magician Ring, and did I equip my armor on my dog? Yes, I did. So yeah, he's, he was talking about his wife, Rosa. Oh, she must be taking care of the inn. Oh, hey! I didn't know you could teleport to Sol. That's a pretty impressive magic act you got there. Hello, Dean Ambrose. Nice to see you again. I'm handling business on both sides of the bi of the building because of the lack of people in town. Ah, uh, sure, yeah, okay. Anyway, the rate to stay is 50 coins. Well, might as well he get healed. I hope you had a good rest. Would you like me to record your progress? Yes. So I'll be saving here. See you later. Okay. Now I've said this the uh, the phrase best one of the best spells in the game quite a few quite a few times because there are a great deal of very 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 good spells in the game. However, what we're about to come across is probably the one of the best defensive spells. Like, because most of the time with these spells, you can only really use them once you're already in trouble. This is more preemptive uh, action. So anyway, 
My alchemy business has dried up, has all but dried up. I'm thinking of retiring. You're such a cutie. Let me teach you a useful alchemy uh, formula. Requires one part acorn and two parts water. Yeah, I'm gonna have to get rid of anything else that uses acorn because regrowth... Oh, that's what it was called. I thought it was called regenerator. But regrowth is a really damn good spell. So, sorry Lance, and I believe sorry firepower. Uh, and actually I could keep using firepower, but I don't wanna. So, regrowth... That's gonna have to take precedent. Uh, what else can I actually put in? Double drain. Uh, I should be able to start using it again. Uh, Atlas, I believe I've already used up all of the Atlas things, and I don't think I need them that much anymore. Um, let's see. Feather is gonna be such a bitch to use. Uh, all right, I, I think I'll put Sting back in. Now, it was very important that I saved at, uh, where I did, because the next boss is, um, a bit on the buggy side. Uh, he's become rather notorious for kind of being, uh, kind of prone to crashing the game. Alright. So now, I actually have a decent amount of spells, and hey, I actually had more ethanol than I expected. Even though I still don't have that much. And hey, you can enter this home. in here so yeah there's this room that oh hey you can just kind of enter I believe if you oh wait I thought this was like Lance where uh, he'd come in and just say fuck you don't don't steal my stuff six parts water six parts vinegar yeah and you can just sort of go through there and file some water all right this room is just yeah, as I said, this is a very bittersweet feeling sort of song, and it's something that I'm not going to say is like the best piece of music in the game because there's a lot of competition, but this is just something that feels like you could, you almost like you could write an essay about it, like, there's, there's just something about it that feels both comforting and sad, you know, and those are the types of fascinating themes that you'd think you really shouldn't be comfortable or even enjoy listening to, but... For some reason, you just kind of like it. Alright. Now, this next area, it's completely optional that I come through here. But I've always just sort of uh, liked to come through here just to try to collect some extra items. Even though it's mainly just filled with friggin' rats. It's basically more darkness navigating. Not that I believe there's much of a benefit. I believe there is a door here. Yeah, you can generally tell some signs of a game that was not uh, completely uh, allowed to do everything they wanted by some some parts that just feel like they made it and yet they did nothing with it. So yeah, even when this uh, actually I'm getting ahead of myself, uh, but. Ah, oh, jeez, I'm getting lost now, too. Jesus. Jesus. Alright. Uh, There's the thing about running animations when they happen to... Ha when they happen no matter what. Like... Uh... Yeah. When you run... When your running animation happens no matter what you do... And What the fuck? It's like I'm trapped. I can't go through the fuck. Okay, I should probably stop going into these walls, because I, as far as I know, these areas are just gated off. And you just can't go... Oh my god! Yeah, I lost it. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Oh my god. Oh shit! Okay, yeah, and it just leads to the frickin' inside, where there'll just be scary music. So if you want to come in here with unnecessarily calming music instead of pl the incredibly brooding heavy tones that this this area would normally produce, yeah, that's how you do it. So yeah, there's the brooding heavy tones. 
And the boss I was talking about earlier that can be a tad bit on the unstable side and is actually one of the hardest bosses in the speed when you speedrun it because he could just outright at any point kill you. This is one of the few bosses where you absolutely need to be able to damage him with alchemy because otherwise this boss is impossible because you cannot hit this guy with melee attacks unless you use a charged up uh, spear. I am the king of the rats, I tell ya. King of the rats. Hey, it's Kevin Dunn. Ah, never mind. It's Verminator. I'm cleaning. I'm claiming this castle in the name of the of disease-carrying vermin everywhere. Prepare to be plagued. Yeah, this guy's not nice. In fact, uh, I'm kind of afraid that I'm gonna crash the game doing what I'm about to do. Fuck! I crashed the game. The game has been crashed. Oh my god. I'll be back. Okay, uh, back here. Now, the funny thing is, this wasn't just like a rudimentary crash, like the game just stopped working. Uh, I'm gonna admit this now, I'm playing on an emulator. My emulator also crashed! Now, I'm not sure if that's actually the sign that this would have also failed on a Super Nintendo, but... Damn! That's all I got to say. So, actually, on the note of actually being on an emulator... Yeah. Cause I'm not doing- cause I'm not gonna go to the effort of getting Regenerator again. So let's see, uh, how many other times we can make this crash. Uh, we know Double Drain crashes. Uh, how about Crush? Oh fuck, I forgot to actually remove Atlas. Oh, that was fast. Uh, the prize that he gives you after killing him varies. Like, you can get Shining Armor, the Bazooka, but here I believe he just gives you 10,000. Yeah, find a stash of 5,000 gold coins. But that's gonna have to be it. My dog is trapped. Oh, no, he isn't. Uh, but anyway, that's gonna have to be it for this part of Let's Play Secret of Evermore. Uh, join us next time when we enter, uh, uh, Ebon Keep, I believe? and confront the queen of this tower. See you guys then.